Hello, my name's Kevin Partner from Making Your Own Candles and welcome to my lab. I've spent a most enjoyable afternoon making a rather nice pillar candle using a Pringles tube. You'll notice that, well you may not be able to notice because the video quality isn't that good, that we have a lighter colour at the top going down to a darker. In reasonably nice gradations all the way down there. So if you want to find out how I did it, watch the rest of this video. Hello and welcome to the labs. Today we're going to use a Pringles tube to see if we can make a nice big pillar candle at very little cost. You'll notice that Pringles tubes have silver lining inside, or silverized lining that's used to keep the, um, the crisps inside dry. That also means that it's more or less impermeable to water so we can use it as a candle making tube kind of making mould. So the first thing to do, I've put a little bit of masking tape on the end, we need to make a hole in the bottom here for the wick. Masking tape stops the whatever you're using to make the hole from slipping around. I'm going to be using a drill because I'm a boy, but you could use a skewer or whatever else you fancy. Just take care. In the right place. go. Now what I did to prepare the mould was uh, washed it out and let it dry. What I should have done was washed it out, um, dried it immediately with um, kitchen towel and that would have prevented this from top end of the mould from getting all, um, I don't know whether you can see it but it's, uh, it's gone all bubbly. So what I'm going to do now is actually cut the mould round to more or less the size that I want in the end. Find something to do that with. If I didn't do that, this I might find it a little difficult to get out because the top has got wet. There we go. I've measured the width so I know that I need a wick of size LX16. So we'll thread the wick through here. That noise you can probably hear is the noise of the double boiler boiling away. That's the hiss in the background. Okay, put it through, seal up the end with blue tack. Well, I remember that we're going to need to stand it on that end, so although, actually, do you know what? I'm going to take that off. Let's get a proper seal. You have to seal it well, but as I said, remember that it's going to have to go on that end while it cools. Now we just Use whatever wick centering device you prefer. I prefer our own unique patented, patented version. As you can see here, I'm not going to pull it quite tight yet, but it's ready to go now. Okay, now I want to make a candle that has that's red, but but gets progressively darker. As it, uh, as it nears the bottom. So in other words, the top will be lighter than the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is I've measured out the total amount of wax, the, the total amount of dye for the 600 grams of paraffin wax that I'm gonna be using. Um, that would normally mean that we'd want six grams of dye to properly color that. What I'm actually gonna do is I've taken the six grams and rather than just drop it in. I'm, I'm going to measure a quarter of my wax at a time, which is 150 grams, and then add progressively larger amounts of dye to that before pouring it in. So I begin with only a very small dye to give a lighter top, and then it gets there's more and more as we go. So I'm going to start by weighing out 150 grams of wax. 
I'm using paraffin wax, you could use Eco Soya. I'm using paraffin wax because it's cheaper. And so, um, which is a good thing when you're experimenting. There we go. So I'm just going to add that to that and then put it in the double boiler, which you can't see, but you know, it's basically just a saucepan inside a saucepan. Okay, okay, give that a few minutes to melt. Right, the wax is now ready, so I'm just going to put this on a tray. If you've long experience, I've realised that um, you can't be certain that you've sealed it properly at the end, although it looks pretty, pretty secure. I would not be popular with Peter if I made a mess. Okay. I'm going to pour the first. This will be the lightest layer. There. Pull the wick tight. Now have a bit of blue tack to the top to make sure it's nice and tight. I'm just going to leave that for a skin to form. Right, a thin skin has now formed on the, um, the first pour. I've melted my next 150 grams of wax uh, and added the slightly larger amount of dye. What I'm going to do is just break the skin a little bit to allow, to allow the two lots of wax to melt. What this hopefully will do is give the effect of them more gently merging into one without mixing completely and defeating the object. Okay, so I've made sure that my wax is nice and hot so that it will partially melt the skin. Now it's just a case of pouring it straight in. And again, waiting for the skin to form on there. Right, the um, skin has formed again, so it's time for the next pour. Again, I've added a bit more dye this time to the wax. And I'm just breaking up the skin on the previous pour. Into the wick again. Again, leave, wait for the next skin to form. Now for the final one. Again, I've broken up the surface. This is the most heavily dyed batch. Pour it on. So my guess why it was pretty good there. When it comes to the amount of wax. Center it up. Once a skin has formed on here. You can then pop it in the fridge so it'll cool a bit quicker. Now you remember I said this was a labs, which means of course that we're conducting experiments and in experiments things can go wrong. Now I put my lovely candle in the fridge and then realised that I'd made a fundamental mistake. See if you can spot it. the lovely dip in that candle. I forgot that I was using paraffin wax, pillar blended paraffin wax, which contracts, which is of course its point because it makes it easy to get out. I reckon this would slip out if I pushed it. But it also, as part of contracting from the inside, from, from the rim, also forms this sort of cylindrical cone on the inside. And the bigger the mould, the deeper the dip so I've had to do a quick re recalculation. I've uh, melted another 100 grams of wax, uh, put the right amount of dye in that, a nice deep dye or at least an estimate of that. And now I'm just gonna do another extra pour 
to fill in the dip. And hopefully that will now work. Okay, let's give it another couple of hours and then we'll see. Right, it's been in the um, freezer for long enough now. Now I've attempted to get this out the traditional way, but it's showing no signs of budging. I think that this tube may just be too long for that and it may be a one use only. Still, it does encourage you to eat more Pringles, which can't be a bad thing. So I'm going to tear it off and see how the candles come out. Pig's ear of this by the looks of it. The frosting you can see on it is just because it's been in the freezer. pleased with that. It's a nice looking candle. You probably can't see but it's significantly lighter at the top going down to a darker red at the bottom there. I think next time I might nice shiny top as well. I think next time I might um, make that more obvious. I don't know. I shall ask the opinion of the those that know better than me whether it looks nice or not. But actually I quite like that rustic look. So there you have it. I reckon that is pretty much a success. One rather nice. Handmade. Pillar candle. Perfect for a um, table decoration. <laughs>